Hi, my name is Evan Clemens. I'm a transplant pharmacist at the University of Washington Medical Center, and I'm here to present Transplant Medications, a class for you to become familiar with the medications you'll take after organ transplant. This video is for future heart, liver, kidney, or lung transplant patients at the University of Washington Medical Center. This is part three of a three-part series on transplant medications. If you have not already watched part one and two, please go back and watch them now. Part one has general medication information, and part two includes detailed information about common transplant medications. In this part three, we will discuss cost and insurance coverage considerations for transplant medications. In addition to this presentation, the UW transplant financial counselors are available to help you. They will explain how to get insurance authorization for your transplant appointments and surgery. So let's get started. This slide shows a checklist of several questions that you should ask yourself and your insurance to help understand your medication costs after transplant. A very important thing for you to understand is your pharmacy benefits. These may differ from your medical benefits. These are the benefits that help you pay for medications that you pick up from a pharmacy. Your insurance pays for some of the cost of the medication but it might not cover all of it. Often you have to pay the remainder of what the insurance doesn't cover. That remaining cost is called the copay. Before your insurance begins to pay for your medication, along with your copay, you may also have to pay some amount of out-of-pocket cost. This is called a deductible. Once you meet your deductible, then your insurance starts working and you have to pay your copays understand what both of these numbers are for your specific plan. Many pharmacy insurance plans may also have pharmacy restrictions, meaning they will only want you to fill at a specific pharmacy. You may need to contact your insurance company to find out this information. Now, usually we can fill the first month of your prescriptions here at our hospital, but your insurance might require you to use a different pharmacy or even a specialty or mail order pharmacy for some of your transplant medications. Another question you should ask is, does my insurance pay for over-the-counter medications? In part two, we discussed several over-the-counter medications like calcium, vitamin D, aspirin, and multivitamins. These will be recommended by your transplant team, but these are non-prescription, meaning your insurance might not pay for them and may expect you to purchase them at the store. Thus, it will be important for you to budget for these items. Another important question is, do you have multiple insurances? If you have multiple types of insurance coverage, make sure you understand how they work together and what specific things they cover, including which one is considered the primary insurance and which one is secondary, meaning which one pays first and which one pays second. You will be able to discuss these details with the financial coordinator during your meeting with them. So be prepared and come with a list of those questions. Another problem is that your insurance benefits could change every year. So it's important to keep track of those changes to your coverage and share any updates with the transplant center if it's going to affect your transplant. After surgery, if your insurance changes and it affects your ability to pay for your medication or get your lab test done, contact your transplant coordinator so we can work with you on a plan. If you are in a situation where you cannot afford your medications, do not just stop taking them. Please let us know as soon as possible. We can help you figure out a way to continue to get the medications you need. Taking your medications every day for the rest of your life is an extremely important part of caring for your new organ. As mentioned before, we can usually fill the first month's supply of your medications here at our hospital, depending on your insurance. Some patients may already be set up with a mail order pharmacy, and that might be convenient and help you save money. However, mail order is not a good option for your first month of prescriptions because you must have your new medications right away when you leave the hospital and start taking them that same evening that you leave. If you have military benefits, there may be additional restrictions on what pharmacies you can use. You might be able to fill your initial prescriptions here, 
but you'll often get a better price if you go through the VA or the Army Hospital. If that sounds like your situation, make sure you're in contact with the doctors at the VA or military hospital because they will be the ones that help prescribe your new transplant medications when you need them. We will coordinate with their team to make sure that you have all the meds you need. It is important to understand that you will be responsible to pay for the medications prescribed by the transplant team. Without insurance coverage, these medications can be very expensive and may add up to over $1,000 per month. Even with prescription insurance coverage, the copays might also be expensive. The best thing that you can do right now is contact your insurance company and find out what your estimated costs are so that you can start budgeting and planning for these costs and you aren't surprised when it comes to filling that first month of prescriptions. Your transplant coordinator can give you a cost list for common transplant medications and you can use that to plan for your out-of-pocket costs. If you have further concerns about affording your medication co-pays, please contact the transplant team immediately. The transplant financial counselors can help you find programs that you might be eligible for, like state government programs or financial assistance, or perhaps you need to change your insurance or adjust it so that you have the best possible coverage. So here's some take home messages. Do some financial planning. You should come to transplant with a plan about how you will pay for your medications and what pharmacy you're going to use. And remember that for three months, you'll be staying in the Seattle area. So you'll need a local pharmacy to fill your prescriptions. Generally, it's best to have one pharmacy fill all your prescriptions. This allows your pharmacist there to get to know you and understand your specific needs. When it's time for your refills, plan ahead and refill your meds as early as possible. This gives your pharmacy time to order the medications if needed. Make sure you understand what your preferred pharmacy's turnaround time is and how long it takes them to fill your prescription and for you to get your refills. Some of these medications are expensive. They might require additional paperwork for the pharmacy or doctor to fill out before the insurance will cover them. Because of this, you may need to allow extra time for that paperwork to be completed. Most importantly, do not wait until you're completely out of your immunosuppressants before requesting a refill. Do call your insurance company and learn about your insurance coverage. Find out what your co-pays will be and budget for these costs. If you have questions, first contact your transplant coordinator. They're very knowledgeable about the pro transplant process They've done this for several other patients. They can answer many of the medication questions that you might have. If you have specific medication questions or concerns, you can also talk to your transplant coordinator about scheduling a visit with the transplant pharmacist. We can meet with you in person or via telemedicine to go over your specific medications in a comprehensive way. Now the following slides will discuss Medicare and transplant. These Slides will apply to many of you, but not all. If this does not apply to you, you may choose to stop the video now. Many patients are currently covered under Medicare. Medicare is a type of government-funded health insurance. The Medicare program is divided into parts. Medicare Part A covers hospital admissions and medications that are given to you in the hospital. Medicare Part B covers outpatient visits and medical supplies or medications that are given to you in the doctor's office. Part B does not usually cover outpatient prescription medications, but there is an exception for immunosuppressant medications if you have Medicare at the time of your transplant surgery. Part B will cover some of the cost of immunosuppressant medications, but it will not cover 100%. That leaves you a copay that you have to pay yourself. If you're worried about affording your co-pays, consider getting supplement insurance or secondary coverage to Medicare. Note, not all pharmacies are set up to bill Medicare Part B. Please check with your pharmacy before you try to fill the prescriptions there for your immunosuppressants. Medicare also has other special rules about transplant. To find out more, 
Go to the Medicare website, linked here. Scan the QR code to navigate to the Medicare website to learn more about how Medicare treats organ transplants and some of the differences in coverage. Also, to find out more about Medicare eligibility and benefits related to kidney disease, see this link. Another part of Medicare is Medicare Part D, which covers prescription medications. Except for immunosuppressants, all your other medications will go through your regular Medicare Part D plan. Thus, signing up for some form of prescription drug coverage is required to be prepared for post-transplant medication costs. To emphasize, it's not enough to only have Medicare A and B, you also need to sign up for Part D in order to have enough coverage for transplant medications. You can choose to have prescription drug coverage through your Part D plan or an employer health plan or some Medicare Advantage plans. Medicare Advantage is also sometimes known as Medicare Part C. Medicare Part D plans are managed by private insurance companies. Their benefit, benefits can vary widely. They generally will not cover immunosuppressant medications unless you had a transplant that was not covered by Medicare. Many Medicare Part D plans still have a deductible as well. During the deductible, you will have to pay 100% of the cost of your medications. Once you've met your deductible, your plan will pay most of the medication cost, and then you will have a copay. Medicare Part D also has a limit capping the amount that you spend out of pocket on prescription drugs. Once you meet this out of pocket maximum, your medication costs are 100% covered by the Part D plan. Ask your insurance company about your specific out of pocket maximum for your plan. Please note that this out of pocket maximum is only for medications covered by Part D. Unfortunately, there's still no limit on your Medicare Part B copays. So the copays for your immunosuppressant medicines after the transplant surgery that go under Part B are not subject to this out of pocket maximum. As with all insurance plans, there are also medications that may not be covered at all. If your insurance plan does not cover a medication, then this information doesn't apply. Find out more about prescription drug coverage under Medicare at this link. Again, to emphasize, in summary, if you're eligible for Medicare, you must sign up for Part A, Part B, and an option that provides you with prescription drug coverage, whether that's a Part D or certain Part C plans, in order to be prepared for post-transplant medication costs. Please refer to the resources linked for further details about choosing the right prescription drug plan option for you. It is common for patients with Medicare to have another insurance plan. That other insurance plan is usually secondary coverage to Medicare. Secondary coverage may help with the copays left over after Part B covered medications. To learn more about how insurance plans work with Medicare and coordinate with Medicare, go to the Medicare website linked here. Another secondary coverage option, if you do not have employer insurance coverage or Medicaid, you can obtain a Medigap policy. These are also known as Medicare supplement plans. This is optional additional insurance that may cover the copay that's left over from Medicare Part B. Confusingly, these have their own letters, Plan A through N. They are administered by private insurance companies. If you're signing up for one of these plans, make sure you understand if it is going to help with the cost of your Medicare Part B medications. You can also learn more about Medigap policies on the Medicare website, which I've linked here. This is the end of part three of the three-part medication education series that we have recorded for you. Please take some time to think about this information. If you have not already, please go back and watch parts one and two. When you have finished watching all three parts, tell your transplant team. Good luck as you go through the transplant process. I look forward to meeting you after your transplant to tell you more about your specific transplant medication plan. Have a great rest of your day.